Welcome back, you. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Crew Trime. Crew Trime. Crew Trime. If you're new here, hello. And if you're returning, so glad you're back. My name is Sarah and what I do around here is tell you a terrible story to ruin your day and put on my makeup at the same time. So if that sounds like a good combination to you, you are in the right place. I'm doing a lot of pointing today. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the bell notification, and then that way you will never miss one of my terrible stories. Today's terrible story takes us to this state with the only active diamond mine in the United States. It's also the home of Walmart and the factory that produces all mascaras, face powders, lip glosses, and nail polishes for Maybelline, L'Oreal, and Essie brands. It's not Kansas, and you also can't say Arkansas. America explain! It's like literally against the law. <laughs> this is Arkansas, and this is the story of Christina Riggs. Okay, I have no plan for makeup today, so we'll see where this goes. Okay, I don't normally do disclaimers on these videos because they're all equally terrible in my view, but I did wanna let you know, in case it's a deal breaker for you, that this one does involve children, so. Caution. Also, I don't talk about the makeup as I'm using it, but if you're interested to see what all this goop is, look down in the description box, everything's linked. On November 4th, 1997, Carol Thomas of Sherwood, Arkansas grew worried because her daughter, Christina, didn't show up for her nursing shift at the hospital that day. Christina was raising two young children on her own and Carol noticed that she had been, you know, down lately. So she wanted to go to the house to make sure that everything was okay. Also, when Carol called her house earlier that day, she didn't get an answer. At 4 p.m., Carol arrived at 8015 Bronco Lane to a horrific scene. Her daughter, 26-year-old Christina, was lying on the floor unconscious, but still breathing. The children, five-year-old Justin and two-year-old Shelby, were dead in their beds. A suicide note written by Christina was discovered, and it read in part, quote, I can't live like this anymore, and I couldn't bear to leave my children behind to be a burden on you or to be separated and raised apart from their fathers and live knowing that their mother killed herself. Paramedics quickly arrived and Christina was rushed to Baptist Memorial Medical Center where the emergency room doctors pumped her stomach and used charcoal to absorb the rest of the medications that she had intentionally overdosed on. The doctor would later say that when Christina was finally coherent, she said, I had to do it so that I wouldn't leave them behind. You guys, this was a murder-suicide. Well, like attempted suicide. Gasp. Christina Marie Thomas was born on September 2nd, 1971 in Lawton, Oklahoma. She grew up mostly in Oklahoma City and, you know, her upbringing wasn't optimal. By the time she was barely entering her teenage years, she was already drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, and doing drugs. There may have also been some sexual abuse as well. She struggled with obesity, and she said that she felt like nobody could ever like her because of her weight. She became sexually promiscuous, and she felt that that was really the only way that she would ever be able to get anybody to pay attention to her. When she was just 16 years old, she became pregnant for the first time. She later gave birth to a baby boy and then had it placed for adoption. After she graduated from high school, she trained to become an LPN, licensed practical nurse. She immediately got a job as a home care worker and later worked full-time for a veterans hospital. She started dating a guy in the Navy named John Riggs, but that actually fizzled out pretty quickly. He got stationed out of the state for a time. She moved on to an Air Force fellow named Tim Thompson. He was stationed at nearby Tinker Air Force Base. And at age 19, Christina became pregnant with Tim's child. Now, Tim was not about this. He was not happy at all. And he dumped Christina and disappeared. But it didn't matter because Christina really wanted to keep the baby. And she did. Shortly after Tim ditched her, the pregnant Christina reconnected with John Riggs, the Navy guy. John was actually psyched, you know, to step up to the plate as it were, and he was there for her for her whole pregnancy, and he considered the baby his. Well, like for all intents and purposes. 
On June 7, 1992, Justin Dalton Thomas was born in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So the, the actual father of the child, as I mentioned, was Tim, and Christina gave the child his last name, but Christina claims that she never heard from him ever again. Although that claim was later disputed by Tim's family. They said that they tried everything they could to try to keep in touch with Christina, and they wanted to be involved in Justin's life, but she wouldn't allow it. So John Riggs moved in with Christina and the baby and they made their own little family and they seemed very happy for a time. Christina became pregnant again and wanted to be married before the baby came. So in July 1993, John and Christina got hitched. But on the wedding night, Christina actually suffered a miscarriage. Not a great start for things to come. Christina had a really difficult time after that miscarriage. She became severely depressed. This was like in the late 90s, so Prozac was like the thing. So her doctor prescribed it to her and it seemed to help, you know? She started feeling better and once she felt better, she stopped taking it. No discussion with the doctor, you know, she just, I guess, wanted to handle things herself. Now, I'm not a doctor, but I know that with those kinds of medicines, sort of like with any kind of medicine that you take to treat something, you have to keep taking it for her to continue being better, right? Things seem to be going pretty well. You know, Christina and John learned that they had another baby coming. They were super happy about it. And on December 1st, 1994, Christina gave birth to Shelby Alexis Riggs. Justin was a great big brother to Shelby. They called him Bubby and he called her Sissy. In April, 1995, Oklahoma City's Murray Federal Building was bombed. You guys remember this, right? Christina actually was part of the response in that she was working triage for the victims that day. So a triage nurse basically evaluates somebody to determine um, how urgent their needs are as far as like care. They try to put them in order so that the doctors can see the people that are the most critical first. Does that make sense? Apparently what she saw that day with the victims really messed her up like really messed her up. And that's saying a lot because nurses see a lot of trauma. They see a lot of gruesome things, really messed up things. And typically they just can compartmentalize, put it aside. But both John and Christina believe that she developed post-traumatic stress disorder from working with those victims that day. Well, a year after that, the couple moved to Sherwood, Arkansas to be closer to Christina's family. The hope in that was that maybe her grandmother could help with childcare while she worked and her mom was a food service worker at Baptist Hospital and Christina got a job there as a nurse. So the kids, when kids are little, things happen and little Shelby suffered from chronic ear infections. So she was at the doctor a lot. Justin was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder and he had hyperactivity that was really, really difficult to deal with. You know, as I said, kids have stuff. <laughs> It's normal, you know, most kids deal with something at some point. And most moms deal with it, you know, the best way they can. Well, Christina wasn't exactly like that. And she was very, very overwhelmed. Not to mention the bills were just really piling up as a result. Shelby's medical care and also Justin's medical care and seeing specialists and things for his behavior. It was a lot. Also, Justin's behavior problems really became a source of strain in the home and in their marriage. John wasn't especially patient with Justin at all. And in fact, you know, he had a pretty short temper. There's actually an accusation that Justin was punched in the stomach by John so hard that he had to go to the emergency room. Shortly after that incident, Christina took the kids and she and John divorced. So even though Christina was working full time at Arkansas Heart Hospital, she was really struggling financially and she was working some extra side nursing gigs and it was just a bad time. Christina said that the child support money was just really not reliable starting to have to make choices about which bills to pay and which ones to not pay, and she started writing bad checks. It was just a mess. Well, John Riggs, you know, her estranged or I guess divorced husband, maybe they weren't all the way divorced, either way, broken up. He claims that the child support payments came straight out of his check before he even got them, and the money was sent like direct deposited to Christina, so he didn't understand what she meant about him not 
providing financial support. Also, according to the Riggs family, Christina never once asked them for help at all. She didn't call them for money. She didn't ask them to watch the kids. Nothing. And John said that he tried to see both Justin and Shelby, but Christina wouldn't let him. I mean, what which story is true? You decide. So Christina's life was like a straight up mess and she was struggling with some ongoing emotional and mental trauma and it just wasn't resolved. Depression and self-harm situations were common in her family. Like her mother, grandmother, a cousin, there was a lot of like suicide type things that had happened around her. A psychiatrist would later say that Christina had a hereditary chemical imbalance that caused depression. So what happened in November, 1997? Christina decided that she was going to end it all and she was gonna take the children with her. So on November 4th, 1997, Christina worked her last shift at Arkansas Heart Hospital. But before she left, she took several different drugs. One was an antidepressant called amitriptyline. It has, you know, sedative effects sedative effects. You know what I'm saying? It makes you tired, sleepy. She also stole a few vials of potassium chloride and morphine. So morphine, we all know, is like a super duper powerful pain medication. And potassium chloride is used to treat, you know, low potassium. Well, potassium chloride in super high doses is commonly used to immediately stop someone's heart, like in a prison execution. Okay, before we continue, this is your last warning to like just entirely click off, see you next week, or, you know, fast forward to this timestamp to skip the details of the children's deaths. So first, Christina gave each of the kids half of an amitriptyline tablet to make them sleepy. Am I saying that right? Amitriptyline? Amitriptyline? I think so. Then she injected Justin in the neck with undiluted sodium chloride. She thought that his heart would just stop immediately. That's not how sodium chloride works. Apparently you have to pair it with other drugs or it's like just straight up torture. So even when it's used on like death row inmates, it's typically administered after like totally sedating the person because otherwise it causes excruciating pain. When the substance is injected into the vein, it like basically burns it up as it travels to the heart. And that is exactly what happened to Christina's five-year-old son. He woke up screaming in pain and Christina didn't know what was going on. She claims that she then gave him a dose of morphine, which, you know, notably, morphine was not found in the child's body. So did she give him the morphine? Christina ended up smothering him with a pillow. And then she smothered two-year-old Shelby with a pillow as well. So after the kids were gone, she went out to the living room for about 20 minutes. She wrote some suicide notes, drank some alcohol, smoked some cigarettes, and then she swallowed the remaining 28 amitriptyline tablets that were in the bottle. After that, she then injected herself with enough potassium chloride to kill like five people, and the undiluted drug burned a large hole in her arm. Well, later at the hospital, when it became clear what Christina had done, the police posted a guard at her door. When she was finally awake and coherent enough to speak to investigators, she acknowledged her Miranda rights and then confessed to everything. Well, this would actually end up becoming a major problem later at the trial. Her defense lawyers say that, you know, she was still under the influence of the medications when she was talking, so there's no way that she could have consented to any of that interview, and she had no idea what she was saying, and she was also hallucinating things. It's a whole thing. But none of that even really matters, but we'll get to that. Christina Riggs was eventually arrested and charged with two counts of first degree murder. She pled not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. And in Arkansas, if she were to be found guilty of these murders, it would make her eligible for the death penalty. And the prosecution was seeking that. Now her defense team was trying to negotiate it down to second degree murder or manslaughter, which in Arkansas means that it wasn't planned. Make it make sense. Like, how was any of that not planned? Anyway, the county prosecutor who led the case told reporters that he didn't buy Christina's excuses. And he said, quote, she's a self-centered, selfish, premeditated killer who did the unspeakable act of taking her own children's lives. I mean, facts. 
When the case finally made it to trial in June of 1998, Christina never denied killing the children, but she claimed that she was severely depressed and therefore was innocent by reason of mental disease. The jury deliberated for about 55 minutes, less than an hour, and then they found her guilty of first degree murder. Two counts. Now, during the penalty phase of the trial, Christina refused to allow her lawyers to present any kind of defense, and she read a statement to the jury asking them to impose the death penalty. The jury granted her request, and she was sent to the Arkansas Correction Department's McPherson Unit at Newport, Arkansas, becoming one of 48 condemned women in the United States. So, death penalty cases go straight into post-conviction relief processes you know, appeals. And it's a long process that drags on for years and years. And many death penalty cases get commuted to life without parole. In Christina's case, could have easily gone that way, but she specifically requested to cancel all appeals and asked for a speedy execution. No matter how you sugarcoat it, no matter she was depressed, she was this, she was that, doesn't make up for the fact that I took two innocent people's lives that were my babies. On April 29th, 2000, Christina was flown from the female death row in the McPherson unit to the Cummins unit near Pine Bluff, Arkansas. On May 20th, 2000, she ate her last meal, a supreme pizza, salad, fried okra, cherry limeade, and strawberry shortcake for dessert. I'm always interested <laughs> what the last meals are. Later that evening, she spoke her last words and a lethal injection of potassium chloride was administered properly. And nine minutes later, she was pronounced dead at 9.28 p.m. Christina Riggs became the first woman executed in Arkansas in over 150 years. And that is the story of Christina Marie Riggs. Wow, I feel like this was short. This was a shorty. They're not always really, really long. They don't have to be. Again, if you wanna know any of the makeup that I used in today's video, just look down in the description box because everything is linked. If you have a crew crime story that you would like to recommend, just leave it down below in the Google doc. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for hanging out today and for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos like this one, then consider subscribing to this channel before you leave today. I upload new videos here on YouTube every week and you can follow me on the rest of the socials as well. That is it for now. I will catch you next time in the next video. Bye. If you're new here <clears throat> in America. Hi. <laughs> I look like a weird doll. Mama Riggs. <laughs> ah. Shit. Mascara on my nose. Little story. Story.